Hi there! In this video, I share with you the painting process of Autumn, a personal illustration theme of my most recent webinar with Painter. For a more enriching experience, I suggest you watch the webinar to learn some tips about character development and design, as well as the creative process of this work. Not to mention, I explain in a painting demo step by step of how to apply key principles I used on this artwork. All right, so let's paint. To the top left, you see a reference window with a rough color thumbnail I did as a guideline, mostly for the local colors on the different parts of what I envisioned for the artwork. On the canvas, I have a thumbnail quick doodle that I stretched as a guide for the composition, the very same um, I used for the color thumbnail. I set it to low opacity and paint underneath it. Notice that my canvas is in mid value as I plan to apply some dark and light mode and I can better work the overall values starting like this. Had this been a very luminous scene, I'd start with a white canvas. And had this been a very dark scene, I'd start with a, a very dark value. So I paint underneath with um, the digital airbrush, which is the brush I use, let's say, 99.5% of the time. I am creating some simple abstract background, similar to what we see in photography, and going from dark to light, as I plan to add more mood um, to the artwork in this direction. I do each color or new ones in a separate layer, so I can have better transitions from color to color. When I work with airbrushes, I always prefer to have lots of layers, so I make very smooth transitions um, between colors and values. You see me adding basic illusions for some soft texturing in the background, just to create some visual interest, but I don't know at this point how much will, um, of it it will be shown in a final work, or if it will be shown at all. When doing personal artwork, I have a very free way of working, always open to improvising along the way. I paint the basic shape for the character's body and her costume on separate layers. The basic color is an average between the darkest and the lightest tones um, the skin may have, so I envision the lighting and I calculate the average color. You can understand more of this concept by watching class 3 of the Sergeant Brushes Master Course, available for free on Painter's YouTube channel. The shapes are quite rough first and then I use an eraser to refine them. I try to keep a relatively soft edge for the shapes in case of this artwork, as I imagine most of it will have a soft with the specific areas of focus. Here I start the shading process, keeping in mind the lighting I want to apply. I go adding some basic soft shading overall and gradually add darker tones. Since I want her to have a very pale luminous skin, so her shadows end in mid-tone. Except the shadows on her shoulders that are a bit darker, these are meant to be um, cast by elements that I am adding later on. I start edging highlights and bouncing light. I start fine tuning her features and experiment along the way, doing several changes to see what works best for her.
Flipping the image now and then is very helpful. I just keep refining her features and work from medium to gradually darker and lighter tones in accordance to each specific area. I try some different lips anatomy for her. I kind of shape and reshape them over and over again until I find something I'm happy with and then I finally refine it. I keep changing and refining her features. Fine tuning the bounce light. It is warm as she will have orange leaves all around. I keep refining and experimenting. I start experimenting with her eyes, changing the direction she's gazing at, thus changing the anatomy until I do something I think um, suits her best. Keep working all around, start adding more details to her eyes areas such as eyelids, eyebrows, etc. Add the flat colors for her iris and pupil, etc. Start adding some shading to um, those areas as I know they will be in shadow. Start also the process of her face paint. I experiment first with the sergeant brush, the only time I use it during the process as um, just a try really, but since um, I cover it and basically it is not shown in the image, I discard this from the process. I come back to the airbrush, which is what I use across multiple layers, to solve her facial paint. Start experimenting with her makeup as well. Add some basic grain to her skin using the sprinkle airbrush and I set them to overlay and lower opacity so they are um, barely visible. I start detailing her iris. Um, a few layers are in compositing mode like hard light and overlay but most of them are just default. Add some light reflection to give more life to her eyes. Add some saturated oranges to indicate dark areas on her nostril and ear for a more natural look for her skin type. Start the average or basic color gradients for her hair. I use a blender to stretch these colors and make them look dense enough behind her, since I'm using a soft airbrush and some areas um, have been a bit sparse. It's the Smear Blender. I start designating some basic shading and lighting to give form to her hair. Start adding some simple texture into her hair, adding with some dark strands set to overlay mode, very low opacity, and then some light strands also in overlay mode and low opacity. Add some basic texture into her costume, 
Notice it looks a bit odd um, at the right side as it has no separation between her breast and arm. And that's because I know that area will be covered with new elements later on. I start the jewelry structure, then add some basic shading underneath. Add some basic shading and highlights to the structure itself, then basic shapes for the stones, as well as basic shading on a layer underneath. Now we work on the stones itself, adding some basic shading to them. I start texturing them um, just by simply applying some lighter value and some stone-like patterns. Everything I am painting here is basically from memory, except that I had a reference for the pose and the head tilt, and I have looked at the mirror to help me with perspective regarding the facial features, as well as to see how lighting would work across these planes. Now, um, I add the threads that are holding the stones, add the cold lighting from the right on her hair, Add a bit more new ones. I add a bit more substance to her hair tips overall. Start the base for the bigger stones that hold her dress. Then some form with basic lighting and shading. And end them with some texturing. Notice at this point I have mostly worked with local colors, applying a basic lighting matching um, the setup I have in mind, but no mood yet. I start working the dress straps, which are made of twigs. I texture them, but at this point I don't know how much of them will be shown in the final image or if they will be shown at all. I fine-tune the shading of her adornments and straps and start um, the florals. Add some leaves to the straps. At this point, it's all experimentation. I don't know how much, um, how dense and which colors they should be. Start adding some of the leaves uh, magically emanating from her. And if you want to learn how I do such leaves step by step, watch the webinar recording. I keep adding leaves in movement and increasing the depth. Add some glow effect, which you can also learn step by step with the webinar recording. This ugly shape you see atop her head is a placeholder for the undead raven I am going to add later on. I have it here as the raven is going to be the biggest dark element of her figure, so it helped me, um, helps me to take important decisions on how to push the values in the artwork at this point. I studied the mood and so far I fine tune a few details. Yeah, looking at it upside down also helps. 
I mentioned I was experimenting with the leaves, right? So I come back at them, um, at the leaves on her shoulder, and I try different colors and decide for the red purples. Fine tune the lighting on some of the stones of her necklace. Start adding some grain with a sprinkle airbrush. Fine tune the glow effects. Give more depth to the mood in the background. Add some bigger grain particles with a sprinkle airbrush to give an idea of depth and motion. Set all particles to very low opacity. So it's a very subtle touch. And you can learn also this principle in the webinar. I start experimenting further with the overall mood. Start the shapes for the raven, fine tune the color value to a dark blue as I want um, no, as I don't want any blacks in this image. Keep working on the shapes and start adding some basic lighting and shading to the head and it's mostly occulted by the wings though. Start adding some lighting and shading as well as bounce light to the feathers and some very simple soft texturing. I keep polishing the undead raven. I continue to fine tune the mode. Start the finishing process. Fine tune some of the particles and overall less details. Use a coarse smear blender to smooth out the right corner above her eye, which had some unfinished edges. Polish the top of the hair close to the raven, add an earring and start polishing it. Finalize more of the mood. Do some last finishing around the raven and her hair and final details to her earring. And this is it. I hope you have enjoyed this video and that it has been helpful to you or inspiring in some way. Thank you so much for watching.